So you want to go to Stanford? Yes, I almost got a perfect score on my SATs. You're a good student, but Sierra, what's your set? Excuse me? Sierra Burgess is. Funny. <laughs> Kid wonder. The true artist. Loser. Sierra Burgess is a loser. About Sierra is that she's not a loser. From no. the, the moment the movie opens, she's in control of the situation. She doesn't let insults get to her. Yeah. So for you, does playing someone like Sierra like give you more confidence? Yeah, she's she's really fascinating to me because she isn't like this damsel in distress, you know. Totally. She's not um, you know, horribly needy and like longing for a guy to come and sweep her off her feet. You know, she's really kind of just totally knocked off balance when this like boy like approaches her, you know, like, or comes into her life, um, because she hasn't experienced that before. Mm. But, yeah, I think there is something special about that, you know, like, playing somebody who is so sure of himself and, like, is very gifted and talented and, like, knows it. I don't yeah, know. It's very you know, interesting. Yeah. That's totally, like, what, as a viewer, like, I can take that away, too. Like, I'm like, oh, I, I wish I had Sierra's confidence, Same. you know? Right? <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, I the way I would live would be totally different, I think. Do you ever feel sometimes like you're the one teenager who doesn't obsess over looks? Upside you. I wonder what life is like for rejects. Move it, Frodo. Veronica. Frodo is from Lord of the Rings. You're thinking of Quasimodo, the hunchback of Notre Dame? I meant looking at you makes me want to gouge my eyes out. One thing that's very refreshing about this movie is that we get to see, like, a behind-the-scenes, like, look at, you know, basically a bully's, you know, what, what her life at home is like. Yeah. And I think a big realization is that hurt people hurt people. Mm. And so, for you, like, does playing this role, has it taught you maybe, like, not to be so fast to, like, judge or, that, like, yeah. yeah? Yeah, to not judge anyone. Everyone, everyone's, you know, facing their own battles, and you, you should be kind and not, yeah, not assume. Yeah. Yeah. I think it might shine like a, a new light on the way you see the world a yeah. bit. Yeah. And so the beauty of this film, I think, is that no matter who you are, I think we can all relate to Sierra Burgess because, mm -hmm. you know, we've been invisible or we, we felt like an outsider. So how, are there times in your life that you felt that way, and how did you overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. All the time. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, to this day, yeah. for sure. I, it, I mean, it, maybe it gets better in the sense that I feel, like, much more mature and grounded than I did when I was in high school, but, mm -hmm. like, even so, I certainly have days where I feel, like, insecure and, like, unbalanced. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I really think it's key to have, a, like, a good support system, mm -hmm. you know, to, like, find people who love you as you are, you know, and don't expect you to be any different or to change, but, you know, to to make you a better person, yeah. you know? And what about for you? Yeah, I mean, constantly I'm um, second guessing and feeling like I'm not fitting in and what I have to do to fit in better um, in all sorts of situations, work and personal, but it's like you said, having a good support system is everything and true friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. knowing who you are is very important. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. I met a guy, we texted. He definitely thinks that I'm someone else. It's called catfishing, and I'm pretty sure it's illegal. Oh, my God. Oh, like Veronica Veronica? That's what I have to live up to? Of all the phone numbers in the world, he texted mine. You need to tell him the truth. They're my words. He's falling for me. Are you more than just a hot jock? Oh, you think I'm hot? No. <laughs> so congrats for not only promoting one film out here, but two. Can you tell us what it's like pivoting from playing Jamie to Peter or vice versa? Uh, yeah, you know, Jamie is soulful. He's more intelligent, I would say, emotionally and cerebrally. Mm. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, Peter Kavinsky is way more egotistical. <laughs> um, uh, so switching back and forth to those, it really wasn't too challenging, you know, because I, luckily I filmed them separately. Mm -hmm. If they had combined <laughs> the films, then it'd be, you know, yeah, an issue. hard to keep track. Yeah, but then again, separate, Jamie so. did have that shirtless scene, you know, where he was. Well, he, I mean, but there was like he was. There was so much. There's so much insecurity in that. That's true. He's doing push-ups and burpees <laughs> beforehand, I love and that. he's like, he's taking one. He's like, oh, that was terrible, you know. <laughs> it's you know, he was just trying to impress. It's keeping it girl. real, keeping it real, which which I really appreciate about both these movies because they, you know, so often we see like cliche romance, which doesn't really unfold the way real life romances do. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think the biggest difference between like a movie romance and like a real life relationship is? Uh, one scripted. <laughs> Besides that. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Um, 
you know, in films, there's a lot of happy endings. And in life, sometimes there aren't. Um, there's a lot of differences. But I, outside of it being fabricated in the films, yeah, I'd say a lot, a lot of rom-coms have happy endings and, and they don't show the sad ones. And if they are, they're kind of like bittersweet. But mm -hmm. like, so there's some bitter ends sometimes. Yeah. Would you want to go on a date with me? Uh, yeah. I know you've been failing all your classes. So? So I think we can help each other. But I do need a favorite. Are you sure this is gonna work? No. Oh my God. I'm gonna answer. Hey. <laughs> hey. So, how was your day? Uh, you know what? The audio is not synced to the video like at all. Maybe we should try again another time? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can't believe it actually worked. <laughs> Sierra Burgess just gives me a vibe from a couple years ago, actually, um, mm. because I, I, I don't know, I get the sense that it might not happen in today's world where we are, you know, it's rare to see people calling. It's mostly like texting or mm. Snapchatting. Do you think that this movie would be still be able to take place, you know, today, like in the real world? Absolutely. I call and, and FaceTime all the time. Really? Yeah, I don't really like texting. I mean, really? I do it, but like, why would I text you? Like, we could just like... <laughs> talk to each other on the phone like it's one it's like way easier to like understand where someone's coming from as far as like a tone mm. and vibe yeah uh, perspective so yeah I think it's I think it's applicable do you think you could like me you are exactly my type do you have any idea what it's like to be a teenage girl and to look like this you know the hardest part is allowing yourself to be vulnerable the truth. He's not ready. I don't even know who you are anymore. Wait, your voice. She's not that bad. She's actually kind of cool. <laughs> so this movie technically falls under the rom-com genre, but to me it's really about the friendship between both of your characters. I think that's the cornerstone of this movie. Um, so for you in your lives, when you're looking for like a best friend, what are some of the qualities that are must-have? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Uh, I mean, honesty is Just a big one. Uh, honesty for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I want somebody who will like call me out and hold me accountable. You yeah. know, I think it's like you know, iron sharpening iron, like somebody mm. who makes you a better person. Exactly. I like that. Growing up's terrifying. I don't know what I am.